just how bad is sugar when it comes to cancer? Um, we know what PET scans can detect it by using sugar, but when people continue to consume sugar, what's going on? Well, <clears throat> some people always say what's worse, sugar or bad fats? Uh, bad fats is worse because it's the bad fats that create the create more of the inflammation and then the cell will convert over into only burning sugar. Now too much sugar can eventually create inflammation and raise the insulin levels. So if we really just broke it down and say, okay, we know based upon PET scanning that cancer cells use more sugar than a normal cell. Otherwise ask your doctor or oncologist, don't use, don't, can you not give me sugar or glucose? They're going to be like, well, we couldn't find it. So that's gone. If your doctor says it doesn't matter what you eat, they're absolutely wrong. So number two is we know that a, a normal healthy cell has mitochondria, healthy mitochondria. The mitochondria are what bring in the fuel and create this ATP. ATP is your energy source. So think of the mitochondria as your, as your engine in your car. You have, the engine has to be working perfectly and the engine on normal healthy cells bring in oxygen and they, and they bring in glucose. For every one molecule of glucose though, because it is an, it's such an efficient engine, think of it as a smart car, right? These healthy cells have a, have a smart mitochondria, perfect mitochondria, and they're able to bring in, for every one molecule of glucose, they're able to create 36 ATP. Just amazing and fuel efficient. And then we look at the difference of a cancer cell, and for every, because their mitochondria is damaged, they no longer can bring in oxygen for their fuel source, so they are horrible. It's the most, it would be like having a, a, a Humvee, you know what I mean, for inside of there. It, 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 you know, it's getting two miles to the gallon here. Mm -hmm. For every one molecule of, of glucose, it can only make about two ATP. So it's very inefficient. So in order for, for these cells to survive, they, they have to pop up you know, 10 to 12 to 18 times more insulin receptor sites and so to bring in more sugar to those cells. So we know just based on that, that these cells, normal cells, are just more efficient. They don't need sugar. These cells use sugar for their energy. So now we say, well, what about fruit? This is what I get all the time. I haven't had fruit. I mean, actually, you know, now that it's almost been five years, I'm able to put a little bit of fruit back in, but I've been, I, I follow a ketogenic diet based upon the metabolism of cancer. And so I don't bring in much, much fruit. Now, does fruit feed cancer? No, fruit mal the fruit sugars spin left where uh, you know, your regular processed sugars spin right. So cancer cells don't use that. But what fruit does do is, and, and this is the argument we get, is you need fruits. In, uh, fruit will raise insulin levels. You ask any diabetic, they can't eat a lot of fruit. So if you raise an insulin level, insulin will create more inflammation. Insulin will take me out of ketosis. I need my body the most efficient fuel burning, and I want it burning ketones. And so whenever my insulin levels go up, my body goes out of ketosis. My, my liver is producing ketones. I've been doing it for five years. I've been in ketosis and still alive, doing great. Uh, your normal healthy cells will, will convert over to using ketone for their fuel, and your cancer cells can't use them. So for me, it's another way of starving this cancer because I don't give it anything. There's no glucose coming in. I have to watch how much, even how much protein I bring in because glutamate will feed into those cancer cells. So you have to really watch how, how much sugars, how much proteins, and I increase it all to higher fats. I watch all, you know, no high glycemic vegetables at all.